Hi, so I want to show that the three sat problem is NP complete. So the three sat problem is a very specific form of formulas for uh, Boolean satisfiability. So if sat was general, here is a very specific one, which is we have an and of clauses. So a clause here, I did here, is just an or of exactly three literals. So here we have uh, three literals. A literal just means a variable or the negation of a variable. So x1 or x2 or not x3 and some other, uh, and other clauses. So clause is exactly three literals. So one thing that we could theoretically do is to show that sat poly reduces to three sat. We could show that, but it turns out that it's a lot easier to show that three sat is NP complete directly. This shows that it's NP hard and it's very easily shown to be an NP. So what I want to do instead is let's do the reduction directly. So we're going to do a direct reduction from like we did for the general SAT problem, but just modify it for the three SAT problem. So we have this language B and NP, and we showed before that P reduces to not three SAT, but just the general SAT problem. And what we were, were given some Turing machine and we outputted, so the output for the SAT problem was a formula phi, which is an and of four smaller formulas. So, so here, what we uh, had was that phi one said that every cell has exactly one value in the tableau um, that we uh, generated. Phi two was that the first row is the start config. The phi three is that the accept is somewhere in the whole machine. And then phi four was that each row yields the next one. So then how do we actually show that this is uh, in three set? So this is something called conjunctive normal form uh, because we have a, a conjunction, which just means and, is a fancy word for and, uh, of a disjunction, which is an or. So this is what is called three CNF, uh, another CNF uh, acronym. But here we wanna see if this thing is in conjunctive normal form or at least modify it so that it can be made into conjunctive normal form. So it's enough to show that each one of these individually is in conjunctive normal form because it's just the whole formula is just an and of the four. So either show that each one of these is in conjunctive normal form or modify it so that it is. And we have to make sure that we run in a polynomial amount of time. This one can be made in polynomial time and we discussed that before, but I want to do it, make sure that any changes that we made still have this run in poly time. So for phi one, if you think about what we did, we ensured that every cell had exactly one value, which means at mo you can't have two and you must have at least one. So it turns out that that one was uh, just an and of ors. So it might not be exactly three uh, uh, literals per clause, but is either a whole bunch of them or exactly two. And we will show if you have something other than three in a clause, we can get to three exactly, and that's pretty easy to show. For the first row, this was just an, a giant and of things. So it's a giant and of a whole bunch of variables in a row. And we can identify each one of those single uh, uh, variables because they were all anded together, we can identify each one of them as a single element clause. And so we can say that they're just a clause with one element in them. And then because it's one is different from three, we can show how to get to three and we'll see how to do that. Um, for phi three, that it turns out to be a giant disjunction of a bunch of, of stuff. So it's just a giant or over everything, not a giant and, giant or. Well, we know how, we're gonna show how to deal with a giant uh, clause or small clauses to get them down to three. So this turns out to be uh, easy to deal with. The fourth one is a little different though. 
So remember that uh, in any two rows, that we have some contents in them. So let's say A, B at the beginning. And then we have, let's say, C, Q, 1, D, then after, then what, let's just say that this thing moves right. So maybe I need one more cell. So then let's say Q1 moves right and changes uh, the cell. So Q1 will, so the D maybe changes to an F and maybe goes to Q2 and then the E is still unchanged. So remember that we had to look at this two by three window right here. And note that the rest of the contents are exactly the same, both before and after this small region. So it turns out to encode this small region, what we needed was an and so uh, of stuff. So we needed to make sure that all six of these cells are exactly in the right positions and in, in have the exact right contents to make sure the transition is carried out correctly. And for this, we need to make sure that this is actually true everywhere in the entire thing, we needed to do an and over all possible positions, and we needed an or of a bunch of these. Because the or is saying that it doesn't have to be exactly this content right here. It could be, uh, it, it, if it's Q1DE, then we know what it must be in the next three cells. But it could be, theoretically, anything can go here as long as the stuff below it, it corresponds to a valid transition. So it's actually an AND of an OR of an AND, which is not in Chomsky, in CNF, not Chomsky normal form, the conjunctive normal form. So in general, uh, if you try to convert this, this turns out in general, not here, but in general, uh, not poly size. Uh, if converted. And there are algorithms where you can actually convert this into an equivalent uh, formula in CNF and I have experience in research doing this problem uh, and it's, it's quite annoying. The, the good thing though is that in this part right here there turns out to be exactly six items. So in there there are exactly six items because we're dealing with a two by three window right here. So because there are exactly six items right here, when we do the expansion here, it turns out that we'll have an exponential number of new items in terms of the size of the inner ands. And there are only six of them. So when we convert all of these out, we will have a, maybe a gigantic or of something, but it's only gonna be in some exponential in the number of items in, in this inner part right here, which is great. So, so after conversion, uh, so after conversion, we'll, we will have an and of or of something. And in here, this, this right here will be a constant number of literals. Okay. Because the inner part here, uh, in the inner green part here, had exactly six items, or at least a constant number of them. That's what really matters. Okay, so the thing is, um, so the, the three formulas right here had no need for any conversion to get into uh, conjunctive normal form. This one does need to be converted, but we can convert it with only a change in the constant in the size of the formula, which, again, will still make it a constant. So as of right now, so at this point, uh, we have phi, I'm going to call it phi prime. So phi 1 is unchanged, phi 2 is unchanged, phi 3 is unchanged, and if phi 4 changed, uh, but this is of poly size, which is great. And then now we just need to uh, show that we can get from any number of literals in a clause to exactly three. So uh, without loss of generality, we can convert from, from 
from not equal to three lits per clause to exactly three uh, lits. So uh, it suffices to work with anything that's not three because the ones with three, we don't need to modify. So let's say that we have uh, fewer than three. Let's say that we have uh, one. So if we have one in the clause, then what we can do is just do an or of this variable multiple times. So if we do x1 or x1 or x1, it could be negated or not, it doesn't matter. So then this has exactly three. If we have x1 or x2, then we could just repeat one of them, same idea. So let's say, but we gotta have both of them in there, but let's just repeat one. Uh, it could be one, x1 or x2, it just doesn't matter. All right, so then now let's work with four, and I claim that this is all that we need. So x1 or x2 or x3 or x4. So how do we actually uh, work with this formula right here to get something that may have multiple clauses but has exactly three uh, literals for each one? So we have to think, well, we got to make sure that the truth value of this formula is going to be uh, satisfied, or, or at least it, it is satisfiable, if and only if the one that we're going to make is satisfiable. So this one is satisfiable if and only if the one that we're going to make over here is satisfiable. So here's the trick. So what we're going to do is we're going to have... Um, we're going to have something like this. So we're going to have x1 or x2. But then now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, split this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a new variable. I'm going to call uh, z1. And then after that, what am I going to do? Well, I got to make sure that z1 has some influence over here because if I just set this guy to be true, let's just say that all of them are false, then the whole formula is false, then that means that this guy over here can't be satisfiable. Um, but if I just set, if I just leave it like this, then C1 can be set to true, and then that satisfies this part. So uh, what we need to do is to have Z1 somewhere down here, because I need to involve X3 and X4 anyway. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have not uh, Z1, and then switch back to yellow. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, x3. Then switch back to blue. We're going to then have z2. And then not, not x, not z2. Switch back. Or x4. And then we can uh, repeat this one as much as needed. Actually, we don't even need a Z2 here, but it, it demonstrates the right idea. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this back into X4. Uh, but if we had a longer clause, then we would actually do this. So I claim that this guy is uh, satisfiable if and only if this whole right side is. So suppose that one of these variables is true, then that means that this side better be true then what we can do is, well, whichever one is true, let's say x2 is, is true, then what we'll do is set z1 to be the opposite. Why? Because then in the other side, we z1 will be set to true, and then that'll make this formula true. And then this guy is true because of x2, so that means that uh, both of these are, are satisfiable, so that means um, the right side is satisfiable. Now let's suppose that none of these are set to true, so that the whole clause is false. Then over here, the, the yellow variables are false. Well then, no matter what I set z1 to be, one of the cases will be true and the other one will be false. So one of them will be true, let's say this one, it, it's symmetric, uh, whichever one's true. So if z1 is true, then that means this clause is satisfied, but this one isn't because the yellow variables are, not, are false and then this one's false. And because of this and right here, we have that the whole thing on the right-hand side is false. So how do you handle this generally? Uh, let's say that we had x1 or up to xm. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have 
x1 or x2 or z1. And then what I'm going to do is have not, not z1 and then pull one new x variable along until the very end when I'm going to pull two. So we'll have x3 or z2 and not keep doing the x thing. Uh, z2 or x4 or z3 and then just keep going. And then what I'm going to have is at the very end I'm going to have, let's see, not z, I think it's going to be m minus 3, I think. I think that's the last one, yeah. So then or, z, or x m minus 1 or x m. All right, so they, and you can argue that this one will have the exact same satisfiable result as the original clause did. So the thing is, how big is this guy right here? Well, the thing is, it's going to be uh, some constant times the original clause size because each one of these is a constant size. And so uh, the number of these is going to be order m in total, and the size of each one is a constant, so it's going to have order m in size. So that means it's just a constant factor larger than the original formula. So in doing all the conversion, we could actually, in some sense, figure out the exact size of the formula or close to it. But we can, because it's poly size to start with, and we only grew it by a constant factor right here, that shows that the whole formula, uh, when reducing to three sat right here, is of constant uh, of a constant times a polynomial size and so it is a poly time reduction and then therefore we are done in showing that the, the three set problem is np complete so hopefully that was interesting leave thoughts about the three set problem down in the comments down below as always please like the video and subscribe to the channel it really helps us out there are many other links in the video description down below if you want to support the channel further and as always thanks for watching and i'll see you next time